assalamu alaikum and dear students in my lecture series on probability theory uh, we have been uh, the last topic we covered was about moments then we will continue the debate and we will be moving from one variable to two variables and we will be discussing product moments when we were discussing moments we were using only one variable now when we talk about product moments we will be talking about two variables and the pattern can go on if you increase the number of variables and at the end of lecture we will be talking about covariance you need to understand one thing that uh, when we go through the statistics course which deals more problems associated to our real life we generally tend to have those data tables and when we have those data tables we need to understand the relationships between two columns of those data that how those variables are related generally what we do we take a table we put for example those sample numbers on one side and the attributes as the column headings and if someone asks you what is the relationship between column one and column two how they are related and i'll take a problem if you uh, go to worldometer corona website these days and you look at the temperature and you look at the uh, on one uh, uh, the rows will be indicating the number of countries and then there are several attributes i invite you to investigate one thing make a column of those uh, countries and their number of cases and then there are the number of deaths associated with those countries and then i ask you to add a column which co contains those their temperatures and you will realize that they are negatively correlated and that's uh, how we will be using this idea of covariance so one, as the temperature increases the harm of those infection tends to decrease and for those very reasons pakistan india and those countries with high temperature there are other safe we come to the topic we are discussing so from the case of one variable uh, and by the way i'll be putting all the associated terms and the links of those associated associated terms in the description of this video so that if you need to understand any previous concept you can um, open that link and then you can just recall what we had in that lecture so this is uh, the moment for when we were dealing only with the one variable and this is the arc moment about the region so when we tell we put this dash we talk about the origin and when we remove this dash we talk about the mean so we this is the arc moment of one variable with respect to region and obviously this is the discrete case but the continuous case we will have the integral the rth and sth moment now we have two variables uh, one variable for one variable we will be talking its rth moment and for the second variable we will be considering the sth moment and about the origin of the random variables x and y and we will denote it by this mu r dash mu r comma s dash or you can read mu dash r s is the expected value of this random variable with x to the power r y to the power s and this mu r s dash is actually the expectation of this random variable which is x to the power r y to the power s and this and since this is expectation so this will give me this summation over here i have this joint probability distribution so the, the, uh, these are two variables involved so we'll sum them up with respect to y and then we'll be summing them up with respect to x as well and as we use this summation we tend to believe that x and y are discrete random variables so this r this r and s moment about the region of random variables x and y is denoted like this and this is expectation of this random variable and this is given up this is given by this summation and this r is from 0 1 2 and so on and the same is the case about s now when we have with this continuous random variable there are this is very simple change we will be having instead of summation we will be having the index and everything else stays the same 
and uh, as we studied in the case of one variable, we'll be talking about the product moments about mean as well. Now, as in that case, we will subtract x minus mu x. Over there, we had only this term, and now we have the second term as well. This is y minus mu y to the power s. And for the discrete random variable, this is simply the summation upon x and y, x minus mu x to the power r, y minus mu y to the power s. And for the continuous case, instead of this summation, we will be having this integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. And everything theoretically this stays the same. Now, one very interesting product moment is mu 1 1, which we will be calling covariance. And we will be, and this is actually this expression, this is expected value of x minus mu x multiplied by mu minus uh, y minus mu y. So this random variable x represents one quantity. This random variable y represents the second quantity. And we want to see the relationship that how the change in one variable has an impact on the other. In our routine case, for example, when we have this y equals to f of x, we have very uh, strong relationships. We have very, we have, we generally tend to develop those formulas and things are very, very clear. But when we have that data table, that dependence is not that visible. So in order to figure out the relationship between entries of those columns, we tend to take support from concepts like covariance. And this covariance is very useful because we will be, as we will be jumping into ideas, where we tend to apply the concept of statistics, this covariance will become very relevant. And this covariance is expected value of x minus mu x, y minus mu y, and this is denoted by c of x, y, or c of b, x, y, or this sigma x, y. We'll be using this notation sigma x, y more often. So this sigma x, y is actually the first moment about x and y about the region minus the sigma x, sigma y. So, as we go about it, and uh, this, uh, as we uh, write this sigma of x, y, this is expected value of x minus mu x times y minus mu y, and we simply take this product, and then we apply expectation. As we take this product, we have x, y minus x mu y minus mu x, y plus mu x mu y. This negative sign turns plus sign. So this is expected value of x and when we apply expectation by its property, this expectation of x will give me mu of x. Mu of y stays its place, then this mu of x is constant, but please note that I am using this property, I am using this property. So this becomes minus mu x mu y plus this, these, both these are constants and you remember you need to recall that expectation of constant is the same number itself. So this number stays its place. These two terms will be cancelled out and we will be left with this expression. And uh, I am sorry I made a mistake over here. This is mu x mu y. Okay, now we look into this relationship, this covariance is equal to this first moment, first moment of x, first moment of y, about region minus this mu x mu y. And uh, we come back to this example which we did when we introduced those multivariate distributions. If you remember, we had a jar containing nine caplets and two, uh, three of them were aspirin, then two of them were sedatives, and then there were laxatives. So, we constructed this table and then we were interested in two tables, two, we were interested in only uh, two caplets out of those nine caplets. So we had three aspirin caplets, two sedatives and four lexative and we developed actually this table, this matrix. And we want to see the relationship, this x represented one variable and this y represented the other variable. One variable was for aspirin and the other variable was for the sedative tablets. And we were interested in computing too. So please note that when we increase the number of aspirin, this, the other tablet will tend, the num that number will tend to decrease. If we increase the number of aspirin tablets, the number of sedative tablets will uh, tend to increase. So we tend to believe that these two variables are negatively correlated. The core covariance has to be negative and we will try to verify this. So we have this table and on one side 
for the fixed value of zero, I sum it up. This is the marginal distribution with this for the uh, for x at a zero. This is the marginal distribution for uh, x at one. This is the marginal distribution of x at two. This and on this side, I sum it up. This is marginal distribution of y at zero, marginal distribution of y at one, marginal distribution of y at two, and we'll be needing it. Okay, so we compute this mu one one dash to begin with. So we compute the expectation of x y. So that means for x equals to zero, y equals to zero, probability at f zero zero, and you can see this is one over six, and then. At x equals to zero, at x equal to zero, at y equal to one, we have f of zero one is this number, and then this for this entry at x equal to zero, y equal to two, we have one over thirty six of these two numbers. And actually, since zero in words, so all these terms will become zero. And over here we have x is one, y is zero, x is one, y is zero, one by three. And then x is one, y is one, 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 and then one by six. And when x is two and y is zero, so this is uh, one by twelve. So these terms will vanish as well, and we'll be left only with one by six. So this first moment is one by six. Now we compute this mu of x. And over here I need those marginal uh, marginal distributions. So when I compute e of x, that means for this value of x. I need to have the corresponding marginal distribution, which is 5 over 12 in this case. So this is 5 over 0 times 5 over 12. For 1, I have the corresponding marginal distribution, that is 1 by 2, and then for 2, this is 1 over 12, and this sums up to 2 over 3. For the second variable mu of y, now we do what? Expectation of y. So for y, when y is 0, now now we go this way. So the marginal distribution at y zero is seven by twelve. So this is zero times seven by twelve. At one, this is seven by eighteen. At two, this is one by thirty-six, and this sums up to four by nine. And now we look at this formula. This formula, sigma of x y, which is mu one one dash minus mu x mu y. So this mu one one dash is one by six. Mu x is two by three. And this mu y is 4 by 9, and we have this answer minus 7 by 54. So that means these two variables, x and y, the covariance is a negative number. So that means increase in one decreases the increase in second one. And as the data table increases, then over there we need to use different softwares to figure out these computations. The idea of covariance is very very vital as we continue to study the relationships between all these. The famous PCA, the principal component analysis, which is one very useful technique to understand different, you know, to analyze and understand the, the various patterns present in the data, uses the idea of covariance. And if as a, and then we'll. As I explain you, PCA will be using this concept from this covariance and other things. So in this video, I stop here, and I'll encourage you to uh, do different examples and then put your questions. Thank you.